now for something completely different. Two good Jewish boys from Montreal, I am such myself, try to square their very traditional upbringing with their Anglo-French milieu and the vagaries of the modern world in Yiddish. That's right, they speak Yiddish. And for those of you who don't know, Yiddish is not the same as Hebrew. It's a peculiar language, now almost extinct, a strange mashup of low German of the 16th century with admixtures of Slavic words, Hebrew words, local words from various countries, all of it written in Hebrew letters. There is a similar adaptation of language on the Sephardi side. Those of you who know Jewish people probably know Ashkenazi Jews, people from Europe, from the West. There are Sephardi Jews, people from the Levant, from the Orient, and uh, they have a language called Ladino, which is based in Spanish. So, in any case, this language perished pretty much with the Holocaust and is now something that is being resuscitated here and there by people like our next two guests, Ellie Batalion and Jamie Elman. Where is Yidlife crisis? Laser, blue glasses, Chaya, laser, sorry I'm late. Um, I don't have a lot of time. I have to be back at the hospital in an hour. Yes, my mother told me that your mother told her that you're a neurosurgeon. Very impressive. <laughs> your mother didn't mention what you do. Freelance? Okay, so um, as our mothers may have discussed, I'm interested in leading a traditional Jewish life. I'm seeking candidates. I know exactly what I want. I have all the questions to ask right off the bat. So blind dates is just a, a more efficient way of, you know, seeing if this is even possible. So you understand. Totally get it. Fire away. Well, the first question is a new one. What's he doing here? Oh, hey, yeah, I, uh... Ist was bin ich schon dein Kind hier? Machen uns stell, als du bist der Keine. Ich bin geht schlecht, schlapp mich raus. Ob es geht geht, schlapp sich raus. Was krieg ich von dem? Äh, wir machen von der Steigen von der letzten drei Jahre zurück. Ask him. Uh, I just ran into my buddy Laser here out front and uh, I've never seen a kosher California roll, so. Are you Jewish? Depends on your definition. <laughs> of course he's Jewish. We went to Hebrew school together for 17 no, years. It's not a black and white question. What's your name? Jaime. Single? <laughs> Depends on your definition. Okay, let's get started. How do you feel about children? Yes, no, how many? Excellent question. I'd like at least two children, possibly three, God willing, at least a boy and a girl, so as the Talmud says, to replace ourselves on earth and continue the traditions of our fathers and matrilineal descent. Good. And you? Uh, I just came for the sushi. You don't want children? No, I, I, I might want, I don't, I don't know. I, just, I think the question in and of itself is uh, ridiculous. <laughs> Excuse me? Well, I just mean, you're, you're, you're looking for a potential spouse here. Is the relationship between the two of you not going to play into any of this? I'm uh, going to get there. You're the one that said you had no time. <laughs> he has mild hypoglycemia, actually. Can we have some sushi? No, no, I, I appreciate the honesty. How do you feel about eating kosher in, out of the house? Well, Great you see, the question. Bible was written by a cabal of sages, let's call them, uh, who used a story and narrative uh, based in Bronze Age uh, polytheism. Uh, I'm so sorry, my mother is calling. <laughs> I better get this. Hello, Ma. The house smells nicht. Yeah, yeah. Sie sagt, was du kennst nicht leiden. Wenn sie sagt, was ich will, also ich bete dir, geh ja weg, Mami. Ah, so sorry. My mother too, I got up. Oh, yeah. Yo, Mami, uh, entschuldig mir, aber ich will bleiben. Ihr Steitigkeit ist erotisch. Sie ist nicht für dich, sie ist für mich. Ja, ich verschwind, Mami. Ich verstehe, ich verstehe. 
Ich habe von mir zwei Schmendereckes, was meinen, als ich rede nicht kein Jiddisch. Und Pater in unserer Zeit. I'll call you back. A romantische Nacht. A lange Schabes Mahlzeit und danach a doppelte Mitzvah. Netflix und chillend. Drei Welte, was beschreiben euch am besten. Hedonist. Atheist. Feminist. Jid. Boche. Itzt. Was der Film? Äh, Sterne mich um es. Spaceballs. Bas Mitzwe oder Siese Sechste? Von was ich absuche in ihre jüdische Jerusche oder von einem Amerikaner Minik? Ich wurde investiert das zerpatterte Geld für ihre Erziehung. Ähm, ich spreche Geschichte von Tay-Sex. Nein. Schlechte Morgensyndrom? Ja. ja. Nobelpremies? Ja, 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 ja. Meinungen wegen Heimdelzion. Vaccinierung? Geben die Brust. Kriminale Vergangenheit. Rezept Narkotik bei Delfinisch. Infektion krank. Eine Reise kein Misrech Afrika in den letzten sechs Monaten. Eine frische Fruchten. Nein. Nein. Was soll ich nicht essen, nicht frische Fruchten? Nein, 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 nein. Ja, frische Fruchten. Ja, ja, ja. ja, ja, ja. Kompots. Ja. Es sind schon einmal gewähnt in eure Tissuren. Ja. ja. Sie haben sich auch verpackte Valises für euch? Ja. Nein. Ist der Mensch gewähnt dein Mami? Ja. Okay, gentlemen, I think I've got everything I need. I'll be in touch, and I've already taken care of the check. Wait, wait, that, that, that's it? We didn't get to ask you any questions. Oh, you'll get the opportunity to do that at our first real date, where you'll be on time and you'll choose the restaurant. And I may choose to show you that I'm warm, affectionate, sensitive, charitable, pretty witty, and very, very sexy, but really just depends on how it goes. It well, which one of us gets a date? Oh, I'll decide at our next pre-screening, which will be here tomorrow. I presume you're freelance as well? Hi. See you both at one. Zeit gesund. Zeit. Kosher is sushi. Der hat der Wurst. Kein Steigen für dir. Shalom Aleichem. Thank you. We are Chaim and Leza from the web series Yet Life Crisis. I'm Jamie. This is Ellie. Hello, everyone. We are the creators of the world's first ever R-rated Yiddish web series Yet Life Crisis. Um, so uh, this is uh, quite an honor for us, quite a yes. thrill, actually. Yes. Um, we want to talk to you a little bit about that uh, crisis that we've been having uh, today. Um, Lots of interesting speakers coming before us. Yeah, we, we're not quite sure how to follow what we, what we just saw there. I mean, some really uh, amazing stories of uh, faith, of religion, of spirituality and belief from truly some inspirational speakers. We are not that. No. Yeah, we don't no. know what we're doing here, uh, <laughs> to, be, uh, to be honest. But we thought, anyways, that uh, maybe we could, uh, like an after-dinner mint, or in Jewish speak, a lactate pill, <laughs> we could help with the digestion process. That's right. The proposed purpose of this talk is to discuss what exactly is a Yid life crisis, a term that we find extraordinarily important because we coined it. Yeah. <laughs> the Yid life crisis is like a midlife crisis with some Yiddish smatterings where you try to square your cultural and your religious heritage with a modern, multicultural, and secular world that has sweet bubkis to do with that. Right. Now, um, the Yid in Yid life is for uh, Yiddish, uh, which is German for Jewish. But of course, this struggle of identity, as you've heard all morning here, is for better or for worse, uh, uh, a universal one. Uh, something that we all struggle with, these issues of uh, identity, of culture, of generation gaps, of uh, hypocrisy, and essentially of questioning everything. 
That's right. When it comes to identity, culture, and religion, nothing is black and white except for our logo, which is not here right now. No. Also, but if it were, it would be black. There certain. it is, yeah. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Also, uh, uh, black and white, the address of ultra Orthodox Jewish men, who I also don't know if they're here. But everyone's welcome, of course. Um, anyways, uh, where were we in that? Uh, we are discussing the, uh, the Yid Life Crisis. Oh, right. Uh, so, look, we, um, we, we started this show uh, a, a couple of years ago. The episode that we just showed you is from our second season. Um, the first episode of our second season is called Off the Top. And we called it that because it was the first episode of the season and because it takes place on the Jewish holiday of Rosh Hashanah, which is the first day of the year, and also because it deals with this, uh, this issue of circumcision, an archaic, barbaric, insane ritual, religious, biblical, rich. Actually, you know what? Uh, for the gentleman in the crowd right here, this, by a show of, of hang on a what second. David, and by a show of hands. No, 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 we don't hands, need to do I was this. Say. You've made your point. All right, never mind. It's disgusting. <laughs> okay, forget that. Uh, look, we first debuted the, uh, the first season of this show here in Toronto at the Ashkenaz Festival, a Jewish cultural festival. Um, and we saw that night that Moses Namer was actually one of the sponsors of the festival. We never could have imagined that two years on, we'd still be getting to make these episodes, meet some extraordinary people, and tour the world. Um, and get invited to such prestigious conferences such as uh, Uncle Moishe's Idea City. Uh, and we truly are grateful and humbled to be here. That's right. You see, Yid Life Crisis began as a passion project. Jamie and I come from a traditional, tight-knit Jewish community in Montreal. We started off in Jewish day school, went to Jewish camps, day and sleep away, and then eventually ended up at Jewish high school, Bialik High School, where we actually learned the Yiddish language, which is a rarity nowadays. But after high school, we'd go on into entirely different directions in media and entertainment, kind of like Uncle Moish, but a, a worse version of that, making film, making television, making music, making theater, and making our parents extremely disappointed. Miserable. <laughs> True story. But at a certain point, Jamie and I decided, you know what, we should do a project together. And we were looking for what's the commonality between us that we could really mine. And at the end of the day, it really came down to our Jewish upbringing in Montreal and the proverbial Yid life crisis. How was everything that we learned going to be squared with this world in Los Angeles, for example, where nothing was really tying into our religious background in specific? But not only were we going to do that, we were also going to do it in Yiddish. And the reasons for that were plentiful, to pay tribute to the language, to our ancestor that spoke Yiddish, and also as a comedic nod to some of the great rabbis that influenced us. I'm talking about Rabbi Seinfeld, <laughs> Rabbi David, Rabbi Mel Brooks, <laughs> Rabbi Joan Rivers. I love it, May she rest in peace. Yeah. The point is they were influenced by a long tradition of Yiddish vaudeville theater and comedy, and we wanted to bring that out in the Yiddish language. Yes. Um, are you going to... Okay, well, uh, we wanted to take something old and make it new again, make it accessible to the uh, proverbial YouTube generation, but something that you left out here, which I don't... Well, just this idea that the Yiddish is also, um, at least, okay, fine, maybe just to me, a, a something of a political statement, if you will. Uh, Yiddish is, is mainly spoken in the world today, in the post-Holocaust world, by the ultra-Orthodox community, the extremely religious Jewish community, uh, which uses it, at least in part, to separate themselves, segregate themselves from the rest of modern society. And I, I, I believe that Judaism always has and does and must continue to evolve and embrace modernity if it's, if it's going to survive. So to me, speaking Yiddish in these secular modern environments was a, a point to the, the, the key theme of our show, which is uh, hypocrisy, religious, spiritual hypocrisy. Um, let me just give them an example. Um, the Passover Seder. This is a, there's a holiday in, in the spring, Passover, where Jews sit around the table and have this ritual meal called a, a Seder. And we read from this book called the Haggadah, which is written in Hebrew, which has prayers and, and tells the story of the Jewish exodus from Egypt. And, uh, uh, well, Eli is, a, is a, an excellent Hebrew speed reader. And he, Thank like you. many people in the community that we grew up in, will, will use that opportunity, the Seder, to show their parents how well they um, can speak and read Hebrew. Um, 
even though I know for a fact, I, no disrespect, that uh, he doesn't know what he's saying. He has no idea what he's reading. And most what? people, it's okay, it's okay. And most people don't. They could just read the translation, but most people don't. And, and, and if they did, I believe that you would find, just one second, that I believe that you would find that it is it's sexist, racist, misogynist, and generally absurd. Uh, but that's not to say that I don't love Passover. I do love, I do love that holiday. I love sitting around the table with my, my family and eating a beautiful meal and singing the songs of our grandparents and drinking wine. And that, to me, is the essence of Judaism at its purest. So, you, you done? Sorry about that. Okay, Go thank ahead. you. Thank you. We have three minutes left. Uh, okay. It's interesting. I, I, but I got to say, though, I got to say, but the, the reason why someone want might want to read the Haggadah, which means literally the telling of the story of the Israelites coming out of Egypt. The reason you might want to read it word for word is to be able to do something that your very ancestors did thousands of years ago. And the concreteness of the religious ritual that it's anchored in is much more tight than the sort of slippery slope of your uh, feel-good and cannabis-inspired Judaism <laughs> uh, that I, I believe I smell. Uh, and, uh -huh. you know, you start there, but then the next, first you're taking out words out of the Haggadah, and the next thing you know, you're, uh, you know, dating non-Jewish. And I'm sorry, but Uncle Moish needs to know these Uncle things. Uncle Moish doesn't care. He needs like, to okay, know. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, so you're dating non-Jewish, and then, and then, you know, eventually, after 6,000 years, you're ruining the entire Jewish bloodline. But no worries, okay. you, you have your own schmeckle to worry about. I understand. Okay, that. you worry about your schmeckle, I'll worry about mine. First of all, I don't exclusively date non-Jewish women. I'm not anti-dating Jews. It's ridiculous. Although I admit that I date and it's something you might want to try at some point in your life. Have you but, seen The Price of J.D.? Okay. Um, and second of all, this thing that he's talking about, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, this matrilineal bloodline through which Judaism apparently passes is, is not Bible-based. That is not God-given. Oh, okay, that is a rabbinical, that is a man-made Talmudic thing that mm. a group of men, a cabal of sages, if you will, came up with a couple thousand years ago. It was not, it, that, that is not a law, that is not a commandment given by God, which, by the way, I'm going to say this, even though it's the God pod, that God could not have written the Bible because he doesn't oh. exist. Okay. And it doesn't, and that's Thanks fine. Thanks for coming to the God Hang pod. On a second. Uh, and that's fine because it doesn't Christ. matter if he or she or it does or doesn't because I still think Judaism and, and some of the other great religions and philosophies of the world are very valid because of their rituals, their philosophies, their traditions, and, and, and God has nothing to do with that. That's, are you, okay. Are you done, Nietzsche? Okay. Okay, I find it very interesting that you're saying all this, and yet you so beautifully sing the seminal Jewish prayer, Shema Yisrael, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is God, the Lord is one, only when you are waiting for a blood test I will. for a venereal disease okay. oh my God. at the Jewish General oh my God. It's a true story. Hang on, hang on, hang on. It's a true story. Hang on, hang enough. There is only one question that you have to analyze, which is, is it appropriate to slice smoked meat by a machine? The voice of God, ladies and gentlemen. Close enough. Here, here in Toronto, I have seen this sacrilege committed, yea, even in Kaplansky. Whoa, whoa, oh. whoa. I'll, we have Zane on speed dial. We'll, now that his troubles from You last have week to are take over. him aside. We'll take care of that. And there is the subsidiary question lean or medium fat? Are we talking about smoked meat? <laughs> <laughs> Very different answer. <laughs> as long as it's served with a side of dill. In any which case, we'll take it. Mm -hmm. um, it was an honor speaking here. We, 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 we thought the ultimate question we had to ask was, why are we here? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, what are we doing here? Anyways, it's Metaphysical an honor. Thanks for yes, the end life crisis. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this is good. This is good. Let's do one more. This is wonderful. You still mad? <laughs> <laughs>